think that will be better. I'm not so familiar with the questions. Om Ajnanat Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshadarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayeva Chapatita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we're on third canto, chapter four, for Bhakti Vai Bhav. So, I'll just share the screen here. Mm. Okay, so we got up to text 19. I think we finished 18. We were hearing uh, Uddhava was speaking to the Lord and he was describing some of the contradictions which are there within the Lord, which are, which help us to understand more of the inconceivable potencies of the Lord. The contradictions are only there because we are not appreciating his inconceivable nature. So then Uddhava was asking the Lord that he wanted to be enlightened about, about the Lord. And he wanted the Lord to explain, just as the Lord had explained to Brahmaji, he wanted, Uddhava wanted the Lord to explain to him the Chatur Sloki, the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada talks about the importance of these four verses, the nutshell verses in the Bhagavatam, which are there in the second canto, chapter 9. So the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam is often taken by the impersonalists and they use it to propagate their impersonal philosophy. And Srila Prabhupada very much regrets this. Uh, dis described a little bit here. Uh, in the purport here, to text 19, uh, the transcendental situation comprises his dealings, his dealings with devotees engaged in transcendental loving service as exhibited in Dwarka and Vrindavan. So this is what Uddhava wanted to hear is the words param stitim is the particular term which Uddhava used in asking the Lord to reveal to him this transcendental information. So Srila Prabhupada describes here that this is the dealings between the uh, the Lord and his different devotees in both Dwarka and Vrindavan. And then Uddhava goes on to describe that he studied the path of understanding self-knowledge from the Lord and thus after circumambulating him he came to this place where he met with Vidura. 
and he's, the Uddhava describes how he's very much aggrieved due to separation. And Srila Prabhupada begins a purport describing the position of Uddhava, that Uddhava's actual life is a direct symbol of the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam, enunciated first to Brahma by the personality of Godhead. And then Srila Prabhupada goes in, goes on to elaborate on how the Mayavadis have uh, exploited the Srimad Bhagavatam and he talks about how Sripad Shankaracharya never touched the Srimad Bhagavatam because Shankaracharya was a great devotee. He's actually a devotee of Lord Krishna. But Shankaracharya was preaching the Mayavadi philosophy under the orders from the Lord. And uh, Prabhupada explains how this was the emergency situation. It was an emergency situation because he had to defeat Buddhism. The Buddhists were rampant all over India. Even Mathura had become the headquarters of Buddhism. If you go to the Mathura Museum today, you'll see so many Buddhas there in the museum from the time of uh, just before Shankaracharya, before Shankaracharya appeared. So it was Shankaracharya, by his strong preaching, that he was able to defeat the Buddhas and eventually there's no Buddhism practically left in India. The only Buddhists who are here in India are people from other countries. So that was the work of Shankaracharya, that he brought back the Vedas and established also pure Brahmanas because it was because of the degradation of the Brahmanas that the Buddhism had come up in India. The degradation and the corruption of the Brahminical culture brought about the downfall of the Vedic Varnashram and allowed the Buddhists to come and take over. And then Shankaracharya came and he re-established the Vedic culture and brought back the Vedas and established also good Brahmanas. So we do give credit to Shankaracharya for some things. Of course, Mayavadi philosophy is something very dangerous and we definitely want to be very cautious about it. And Prabhupada's mission was preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to defeat, my, to defeat impersonalism and voidism. So these philosophies bring a lot of havoc onto the world. Mayavadi philosophies unnecessarily make their commentary on the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam without any bona fide intent. Prabhupada says, unnecessarily, they poke their nose into the, the Bhagavatam, which actually is not their position at all. And Shankara, Sripad Shankaracharya did not touch it out of respect for the personal philosophy. Uddhava studied the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam directly from the Lord, who spoke them first to Brahmaji and the line. And, and, and this time, the Lord explained more, confidenti more confidentially the self-knowledge mentioned in the Paramatstiti. Unless one is awakened to the stage of Uddhava, one cannot understand the real purport of the four essential verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, to actually understand the full significance of this Chatur Stoki, we have to be awakened to the level of Uddhava. <laughs> so that's really, you know, that's really an exalted level. We can understand, we're just trying to enter into an understanding of the Chatur Sloki Bhagavatam. So then Uddhava continues speaking to Vidura, how? He says he wants to, he, he's going to go now to Badarik Ashram 
because that was the instruction he had received from the Lord. The Lord had requested him that it would be better for you. Initially, the Lord had told him to do, go to Badarik Ashram. Uddhavad didn't follow because he was so much attached to the Lord. And he followed the Lord and he was with him just before he departed from the world. But actually, the Lord had requested Uruva that better you go to Badarik Ashram, you don't have to be present for all the... Uh, the, the, the fighting which is going to go on. He didn't want Uddhava to be present when all the, the unfortunate, nasty things would go on and how the Yadu dynasty would be removed from the earth. But Uddhava didn't follow that instruction. He went with the Lord. But now the Lord's departed. Now Uddhava is going to go to Badarik Ashram. So... Prabhupada writes, Uddhava constantly associates with the Lord in double perception, in the double perception of simultaneously separation and meeting. So it's an interesting way of describing Uddhava's situation. Double perception, simultaneously separation and meeting. Simultaneously he's meeting with the Lord and he's also feeling separation from the Lord. He's meeting with the Lord because he's following the instructions which the Lord had given him. So that is a very important point, that we definitely want to follow the instructions we get from the superiors. Prabhupada taught two ways to associate, Vani and Vapu, right? So, you may miss the Vapu, but we always have the Vani to associate with. At the end of the purport, Prabhupada writes, As long as one is engaged in the execution of the order of the Lord, there is no factual separation from Him. So, although physically it may be separate, if you follow the instructions, then you have that association. Prabhupada said about his own spiritual master, he said, he is always by my side, leading me. So that was Prabhupada's feeling. This happened, it actually happened one time. Some god brothers were saying, they complained about Prabhupada, they said, he doesn't come to the samadhi of his Guru Maharaj. So Prabhupada explained why he didn't come. And he said, they collected so much money and they didn't build a very big samadhi. And he said also, it doesn't look like my Guru Maharaj. But then he said also, he said, my Guru Maharaj, I don't think of my Guru Maharaj as being under the ground. He is always by my side, leading me. And Prabhupada showed how much he was associating with his spiritual master because he always followed the instructions. He always told us how his Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj told him, if you ever get money, use it to print books. And Prabhupada did that. We, that you know, you can see in Prabhupada's time, he printed the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, volume by volume. And then the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the whole set of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, cost a lot of money to print these books. You know, it was a big... We could have used that money if Prabhupada just wanted to build big buildings and put up big temples, he could have done it. But he put the money into books. He wanted the money to go into books. Anybody gave Prabhupada a donation, he would say, put it in my book fund. That's what would happen. If you had money, when you were becoming a devotee, you had some money, and say, Prabhupada, I have this money, I want to give you. He said, put it in my book fund. So this was the instructions he got from his spiritual master shows us how much he was associating with his spiritual master. Okay, going ahead, text number 22. In Badarik Ashram, the personality of Godhead and the incarnation of the sages Nara Narayan has been undergoing great penance since time immemorial for the welfare of all amiable living entities. And Prabhupada writes here about the importance of this place, a holy place, very important place of pilgrimage. And uh, said Prabhupada certainly appreciates it. This, it's been 
we can see 5,000 years ago even, so many people were going there and residing there. So a very, very important holy place. So Uddhava is going to go there. And why is he going there? Of course, he's going there to associate with the devotees who are there. And he's also going there uh, to hear from, to have the association of the sages Nara and Narayan, maybe in the deity form. And he's going to take a message also. He has a message from the Lord to give to Nara and Narayan. So that we'll, hear that, we'll hear that later, the message which he was to deliver to Nara Narayan. And uh, he's going there, it, it will inspire his hearing and chanting, and he'll have the association of all these wonderful devotees there in Badarika Ashram. So then, the chapter then switches to Sukadeva Goswami, who's narrating this whole pastime and he tells about how after hearing from Uddhava about the annihilation of his friends and relatives, then Vidura pacified his overwhelming bereavement by dint of his transcendental knowledge. When we lose someone who's very near and dear to us, it's certainly very painful in the heart. And at that time, at such times, we have to take shelter of transcendental knowledge. I remember when Srila Prabhupada departed from the world, so we, all we could do, you know, we were all so devastated, all we could do was just, just be in the temple room and do kirtan and then people, different devotees would come and they would speak and they would speak about Prabhupada and we would remember Prabhupada's lilas and we would hear Prabhupada's instructions and in this way by hearing transcendental knowledge then we, our minds were gradually pacified. Of course it was overwhelming and certainly Uddhava and Arjuna, people like that, when the Lord departed from the world, they were also devastated. It was also, it was unbearable for them to, to lose the separation of the personality of Godhead. So a bit more about Uddhava, going ahead, text number 24. Uddhava, the chief, most confidential amongst the devotees of the Lord, was going away, Vidura in affection and confidence questioned him. Vidura questioning Vidura, uh, Vidura's questioning Uddhava, he described in 25 what he wants. He said, if, if it is, he said, uh, kindly describe the, the self-knowledge with which you have been enlightened by the Lord himself. So Uddhava had received the knowledge from the Lord. We heard the Lord had instructed him in that knowledge of the Chatur Sloki and the self-knowledge. So Vidura is asking Uddhava, explain it to me. I'd like to hear it myself. Can you explain it to me? And we will hear, of course, what happens when how Uddhava replies. Uh, Uddhava in, says uh, Uddhava is not willing to give this knowledge personally to Vidura, but he tells him that you should go to Maitreya. Maitreya is nearby. Well, <laughs> actually, they're not so nearby, but uh, <laughs> this is how it's termed. Maitreya was way up somewhere, you know, there's hundreds of kilometers away from where Uddhava met Vidura. But that's how it's described here, that Maitreya is nearby. 
an Uddhava doesn't want to go against the Vaishnava etiquette. He doesn't want to give instruction when somebody, someone like Maitreya, who is much more of the age of Vidura, let, he thinks, let Vidura go to Maitreya, because Vidura is so much senior to Uddhava in age. So Uddhava considers that it would be Maryada, it would be offensive for him, it would be against the etiquette, it would be this Mar Maryada Vikramana. So he suggests to Vidura that you go to Maitreya, because Maitreya is your age is more suitable to inst instruct you than I am. Well, out of respect for Maitreya, he's saying like that. So this is also significant. We have to follow the Vaishnava etiquette. Maitreya was also there. So he'd also received the instruction from the Lord. When the Lord had instructed Uddhava, at that time Maitreya was also there. So he'd personally heard everything directly from the mouth of the Lord. Therefore, Uddhava says, you go to Maitreya, it will be proper. But still, they spent the whole night together described there in text 27 how they passed the whole night as if it were a moment and they were discussing topics of Krishna. So certainly Vidura took a lot of advantage of the association of Uddhava and he did hear a lot from the Lord. Text 28, Maharaj Pariksha is inquiring. He wants to know uh, after the disappearance of the members of the Vrishni and Boja dynasty, why did Uddhava alone remain? Everyone else had departed. The Kurus, well, he mentions the Vrishni and the Boja dynasties. They were all, they all disappeared. So there were different people among the Vrishni, the Vrishni and Boja dynasty. Some were demigods. The demigods would go to the spirit, go to the heavenly planets, and the eternal associates of the Lord, who were all his expansions, they would go back to the spiritual world, back to the spiritual sky, to their places there, to their different positions where they were serving. But what about Uddhava? Why didn't Uddhava go? Because Uddhava is also an associate of the Lord. And the Lord also told him that this is going to be his last life. So why didn't Uddhava go when the Lord left? So this is Vidura's very nice question. Well, you have the, Uddhava had the instruction from the Lord that he should stay, that he should stay. He gave him some service to do. So in the purport, Prabhupada comments here, to act in accordance with the rules and customs of the material world, the Lord seems to take his birth or leave his body but the pure devotees of the Lord know well the actual fact. It is necessary, therefore, for the serious students of Srimad Bhagavatam to follow the notes and comments of the great Acharyas like Jiva Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravarti. So the problem comes to trying to understand the pastimes of the Lord, that how could the Lord leave the world in the manner in which he did. You know that all the, the Vrishnis are killing each other and then the Lord, they're all intoxicated and they kill each other and the Lord is there also and he's with them and, he, and we're told it's all his arrangement. 
so it's very difficult for people to understand these things, and they think this must just be imagination. And we're not talking about a small number of people. It was millions of people. There were millions of people who went to Prabhashetra and then they fought with each other. The whole Vishni, all the, the Yadu dynasty, they'd all gone there. The Lord wanted to remove them from the planet. He, want, he thought the, the mission is completed, now they can go back. He was worried also, one of the reasons the Lord was concerned about was that they may take, take advantage of their connection with Him. Sometimes people think that the seminal birth is more important than the actual connection by spiritual instruction. To claim that, you know, I'm born in the family of Lord Krishna, I'm Lord Krishna's son, or I'm his grandson, like that, I'm his relative, like that. So people claim, if they claim like that, then people who are not in very good knowledge, they may give, over, they may overemphasize that position. They may think that's more important than just a, being a regular devotee, someone who's surrendered to Krishna. So they may not give proper respect to the spiritual teachers and acharyas, but they may give respect to Krishna's own family. So this is like the, the second offense in chanting the holy name to consider the names of the demigods like Shiva and Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. And so we may consider the family members, if we consider the family members to be more important than the devotees, then this is also an offence. This is also uh, offensive chanting, giving too much importance to the seminal connection. So Lord Krishna was worried that his family members may take advantage of their connection with him and it may bring about the degradation in the world, it may bring a lot of problems into the society. So therefore the Lord sent them back. He didn't want to give any over importance to his family members. Of course some of them remained. We know Brajanath was still there and he established the deities of Lord Krishna. But uh, the mass of them, they all went back. They were all just annihilated in that great war, fratricidal war, and they all finished their connection, their pastimes on this earth and went back to their own abodes. It was not karma. It was the arrangement of the Supreme Lord under his internal potency. Oh, just one more point here. Lord Krishna ordered Uddhava. He ordered Uddhava by signal to go to Badarik Ashram after his departure. And Uddhava, as a pure devotee of the Lord, carried out the order more faithfully than going back to Godhead or the abode of the Lord. That was the cause of his remaining alone even after the departure of the Lord from the face of the earth. So that's one reason why, that's the reason why Uddhava stayed. He got the order, it was Krishna's order to him. The last instruction, you should do this. You get an instruction from the spiritual master, it's great mercy. Uh, now, just like Prabhupada got order from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati at their first meeting. You're a nice young man, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? But Prabhupada said, I was a young man, I just married, I had a young family, I couldn't take up that instruction at that time. But he never forgot 
and later on in his life, and then he took up the order. So like that, the order of the spiritual master, it's with you. You may not immediately be able to fulfill it, but we should never forget the order. And at some point we should try to take up fully the instructions which are given to us. Just like going to the West, Prabh Prabhupada went to the West because the spiritual master had told him before he departed that uh, he told him, you are good in English, you can use your English for preaching. So Prabhupada understood that his Guru Maharaj was telling him that, you know, maybe you should go to the West. Maybe you go over to the West, to the English-speaking countries and preach there. And he knew also the desire of his Guru Maharaj. He'd seen how Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had sent disciples to England and supported them and sent money to them to maintain them while they were there. He was so eager to establish something in the West. So therefore Srila Prabhupada also wanted to try to fulfill that desire of his Guru Maharaj. So he didn't forget the order. And Prabhupada also writes, uh, a spiritual master lives forever by his divine instruction and the follower lives with him. Okay, so Sukadeva Goswami is speaking, text number 29, and we hear about uh, the cursing of the Brahmanas was only a plea, but it actually it wasn't just due to the cursing of the Brahmanas, but it was a desire of the Lord himself, that he wanted everyone to depart from the world. So how was it possible that he would leave his body and then disappear from the vision of the world? This is a, the kind of problem which comes up for those people who don't have much faith. They are not able to understand the departure of the Lord from the world. And they think of him as having a body which takes birth and which dies. And so this is of course the gross misunderstanding of the position of the Lord. That the Lord's body is Satchidananda. His body is not like ours. We take birth and die. But the body of the Lord is not like that. It is full of bliss and knowledge eternally. So he appears for some time and then disappears, just as we see the sun. At this time in the morning, it's rising. And in the evening will set and disappear and go some other place. Okay, here in the purport, here in this verse, the word uh, spitang is also used, which indicates that he left his gigantic universal form called the Virata Rup, not his prime evil eternal form, because there is hardly any possibility of his changing his form of Satchit Ananda. And, and then over here, on the second page over here in the purport, uh, Prabhupada elaborates more, he gives an example. He says, in, in grammar, when an adjective is taken away from the subject, the subject is, it modifies, does not change. Similarly, when the Lord quits his virata rup, his eternal form does not change, although there is no material difference between himself and any one of his innumerable forms. And so the subject may be like, oh, the big book. So the adjective is big. So if you call it the book, it's the same book, it didn't change, but you just took away the adjective. So in the same way, the virata rup is just a, a, it's a part of the Lord, but we take the virata rup away, it's a temporary manifestation of the Lord. It's not going to change the Lord. The Lord still has a Sanchidananda form. That is eternal. That doesn't change. So that's the example there. We want to understand the appearance of the Lord. It's a very important point for us to understand how the Lord appears and how he disappears. 
We have to often preach about these things to people, general mass of people. They don't have this knowledge. They never read these commentaries by the Acharyas. So we have to enlighten them about it. And here, text number 30, uh, the Lord is speaking. Now I shall leave the vision of the mundane world, and I see that Uddhava, the foremost of my devotee, is the only one who can be directly entrusted with knowledge about me. Hmm. So this is... <laughs> You know, in the previous verse, Sukadeva Goswami is speaking. So now Sukadeva Goswami is telling us the words of the Lord. The Lord had spoken like this, that he wants Uddhava, another reason why Uddhava is left behind, that he is the representative of the Lord. He's the only one who can be directly entrusted with knowledge about me. So that was why Uddhava was left behind. Uddhava was considered to be the best among the, the, the devotees of that time. And therefore, he was, he was directly instructed by the Lord's grace so that people might take advantage of Uddhava's knowledge after the disappearance of the Lord from the vision of the world. So you can see Uddhava has got a really great responsibility here that he has to take on this instruction. This is one of the reasons why Uddhava didn't, why Uddhava was told to go to Badarik Ashram. And, and, and Prabhupada writes here, where the Lord is present personally by the Naranarayan deity. And one who is transcendentally advanced can gain direct inspiration from the temple deity. You know, sometimes we hear that temple worship is for neophytes, but here we see Prabhupada is glorifying temple worship, that advanced devotees, they can get inspiration from the deity. And thus a devotee of the Lord always takes shelter of a recognized temple of the Lord in order to make tangible advancement in transcendental knowledge. So we see all the Goswamis, they have their own deities. They had their own deities. They were also worshipping deities. They didn't just leave the deities for neophytes. The deity itself is a great inspiration for the devotees. We should never misunderstand the importance of deity worship. So, uh, the Lord is still speaking here, text 31. Uddhava is not inferior to me in any way, because he is never affected by the modes of nature. Therefore, he may remain in this world in order to disseminate specific knowledge of the personality of Godhead. So, Uddhava was given this responsibility. Later on, of course, that responsibility came to Sukadeva Goswami and he was speaking but initially it was Uddhava so in the purple Prabhupada talks about the Brahmana is in the mode of goodness and to be a Brahmana is not sufficient for becoming a representative of the Lord right we, we we, we want to understand the duty which was given to Uddhava. We're also, in a similar way, we also have a responsibility. The responsibility is also there to us, uh, carrying on that knowledge which is given to us by the spiritual teachers. But simply being a Brahmana, simply being in the mode of goodness is not enough. We have to become Vaishnavas. We have to become free of the modes of nature. The Brahmana is in the mode of goodness. We have to come to the mode of Shuddha Sattva. We have to transcend the modes. And then we can be properly qualified to distribute this knowledge. A bit more in the purport. Uddhava was in such a transcendental position 
And thus, he was selected to be the factual representative of the Lord in his body, in his bodily absence from the vision of the world. The representative of the, of the Lord. When the Lord's not present, he's his representative. And a bit more at the, at the end there. Such a devotee of the Lord can withstand all onslaughts of material nature. And therefore, he is known as Goswami. Only such Goswamis can penetrate the mysteries of the Lord's transcendental loving relationships. We want to understand the pastimes of Krishna. We have to be qualified. We have to be worthy. We have to control the mind and senses. But then we have to go on from that. We have to come to the level of Shuddha Sattva. We have to transcend all the modes of nature. We have to develop our loving relationship with Krishna. So we have to hear. We have to hear for a long time. That's very important for us. Okay, text 32. Sukadeva Goswami informs the king that Uddhava, being thus instructed by the Lord, who is the source of all Vedic knowledge and spiritual master of the three worlds, reached the pilgrimage site of Badarik Ashram and engaged himself there in trance to satisfy the Lord. So some important points in this purport also. The Lord wanted Uddhava to fulfill his mission and disseminate knowledge which he which to which which he had not spoken even in Bhagavad Gita. So Uddhava has to carry on what information Krishna didn't give to Arjuna, Uddhava has to continue that. He has to give that additional information. What is not in the Bhagavad Gita, we shouldn't think everything is there in the Bhagavad Gita. Of course, Bhagavad Gita is very wonderful, but we have to Hare Krishna. Okay, back with you. Okay, we're on text 32 here. And we're hearing how Uddhava reached up to Badarik Ashram and engaged himself in the service of the Lord. And we heard the importance of hearing from Uddhava, knowledge which is not even in the Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada talks about taking mercy of the great sages who lived at Badarik Ashram. The Lord authorized Uddhava to speak on his behalf. And Prabhupada said, unless one has such authorization, one cannot understand or preach 
the devotional service of the Lord. Uddhava was constantly informed of the conditions of life on other planets, and all the sages were anxious to know of them. Just as we are anxious to know about the planets in our in, in space, Uddhava was particularly deputed to carry a message to Badarik Ashram, not only to the sages of that place of pilgrimage, but also to the Naranarayan deities. Such a message must have been more confidential than the knowledge described in the pages of the Vedas. So this is the kind of knowledge which Uddhava was giving. Uddhava had heard all of these things because Lord Krishna had gone to so many places in the course of his pastimes. He'd gone to the heavenly planets, he'd gone to the lower regions, he'd gone to, uh, he'd even gone to Vaikuntha. He, he, he did so many different, he went to visit so many places in the course of his pastimes. It's, not only on this planet, not only in Dwarka and Mathura, but he visited Mithila and, and then Ujjain and Avantipur rather, like that, these different places he'd visited. And then he went to, when he went to get the son of his guru back, he had to go to the lower regions, to Yamaraj, to bring back his son, his teacher's son. He went to the heavenly planets to deliver the the uh, earrings of a deity and to take the Parajata flower. And when he wanted to get back the Brahmana's sons from Dwarka, then he went to see Lord Vishnu in the Kajyo Ocean. So Uddhava heard about all of these places from Lord Krishna and the sages in Badarik Ashram, they're also eager to hear. We can hear also in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sanatana Goswami describes also extensively about different regions in the universe. He describes the higher planets. He describes about uh, Tapaloka and Brahmaloka and Mahaloka, Janaloka, these places. Very special. All right. every, every living entity can, like Uddhava, also become a confidential messenger of, on the same level as the Lord, provided he becomes confidential himself by dint of loving devotional service. So Prabhupada is writing here, he's encouraging all of us that we can become like Uddhava, we can also become a representative of the Lord but with qualification. And Prabhupada describes the qualification being confidential, being confidential himself. So <laughs> we have to think, we have to uh, absorb our mind, think what is actually Prabhupada meaning there when he says confidential, confidential by dint of loving devotional service. But Prabhupada certainly wants us to develop that kind of mood as Uddhava had, to accept the order of the Lord. At the end of the purport, everyone must have been very anxious to know about the mystery of the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. And that message must have been explained by the Lord to Uddhava and dispatched to Badarik Ashram for the information of Nara Narayan and other pure devotees of the Lord. So we'll hear that message. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his commentary, he's told us, he's given his uh, understanding of what that message was. So Vidura heard from Uddhava about the appearance and disappearance of Lord Krishna. Text 33. The Lord's glorious acts and his acceptance of various transcendental forms for the performance of 
extraordinary pastimes, very difficult for anyone other than his devotees to understand. And for the beasts, they are simply a mental disturbance. <laughs> so this is how Prabhupada terms his uh, Pashunam. Pashunam meaning, of course, animals. The Prabhupada's put of the beasts. <laughs> so it describes these people who don't like to hear about Krishna, who have no devotion for the Lord. They're just beasts, they're just animals. So they will never understand the pastimes of the Lord. Anyway, Vidura, he was really in ecstasy hearing all this and described here just at the end of the chapter how Vidura began to cry loudly, overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. He was remembering how Lord Krishna had rem remembered him while he was leaving the world. And Prabhupada comments on this, being able to cry for the Lord, that this is the perfection of devotional service, that you can cry for the Lord. Okay, now what we want to do, we'll just go to the PowerPoint and there's a, some things there we want to show. All right, here's the, let's see. Okay, here's the beginning of the chapter. We heard how the Lord advised Uddhava to, to go to Badarik Ashram, but Uddhava, however, followed the Lord to the river Saraswati, and he saw the Lord preparing to leave the material world. And then the chapter goes on. We hear Maitreya Muni arrives, and Uddhava requests enlightenment on the Chatur Sloki. Then Uddhava departs to Badarik Ashram, and Vidura leaves to find Maitreya Muni. That's the end of the chapter. All right, and here you see the Lord in his forearm form, sitting under the tree with his back to the tree. Remember, the tree represents the material world. And there's Uddhava with Maitreya. So, a question we can ask here. Let, let's see what happened. Why did Krishna leave Uddhava behind? That was answered in verses 28 to 32. So, do any of you remember from our talking, we were going over these points? Give me some reasons. Why did Krishna leave Uddhava behind? He was the most qualified person. He was the most qualified person for, for what? To propagate uh, Bhakti Yoga, Maharaj. Well, send a message to the Madhrikashram, messages in the Madhrikashram. Well, he was the best devotee. He was the best. He was the best devotee. Yeah. Maharaj, what Krishna could not give. Yes, right. Krishna also. Let's go ahead. We'll see there's some more things. Here's the message to Nara Narayan Rishi. This is the message to Nara Narayan Rishi. I'll read it to you. Greetings to Sri Nara Narayan. The pastime of showing myself to the world is supposed to last for a century and a quarter. I have now reached the end of that period, so I will now disappear along with my entourage, the devotees in Dwarka. After sending back the demigods, and other universal administrators to their respective abodes, I will return to Vaikuntha in the part of me that Brahma prayed for. The part of me that expanded from you, the part accompanied by Arjuna, 
will return unseen to your residence. Right? The Lord speaking to Nara Narayan Rishis. So that part of me, that's Narayan. So that part will return. It will return to your residence. Residence being Badarik Aishram. Finally, for the benefit of those who are eager to see my original complete self, I send this most dear of my personal associates, Uddhava, to whom I have granted a physical appearance that resembles mine. Indeed, Uddhava is not inferior to me in any way because he is never affected by the modes of material nature. Therefore, he may remain in this world in order to disseminate specific knowledge of the personality of Godhead. So we see one reason why Uddhava remained was to deliver this message to Nara Narayan Rishis to, and to all the devotees there in Badarik Ashram and to encourage them and enlighten them. And Uddhava is he's not inferior to the Lord. He, he even resembles the Lord in physical appearance. So the Lord, the Lord himself did not go to Badarik Ashram. He'd gone to Dwarka, he'd gone to the lower planets, he'd gone to the higher planets. He didn't go to Badarik Ashram. And so he arranged for Uddhava to go there. All right. Since both Uddhava and Maitreya were directly instructed by the Lord, both had the authority to become the spiritual master of Vidura or anyone else. But Maitreya, being elderly, had the first claim to becoming the spiritual master, especially for Vidura, who was much older than Uddhava. One should not be eager to become a spiritual master cheaply for the sake of profit and fame, but should become a spiritual master only for the service of the Lord. The Lord never tolerates the impertinence of Maryada Vyatikram. One should never pass over the honour due to an elderly spiritual master in the interest of one's own personal gain and fame. From Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, Chapter 4, Text Number 26, Purport. So, Maryada Vyatikrama, this offence of surpassing the previous authorities. So, a question, why did Uddhava, although highly qualified, refuse to instruct Vidura, who was submissively inquiring about transcendental knowledge? What's the obvious answer? Yes, because of the difference in age. <clears throat> that Urva is young, young man, and Vidura is elderly, like much, like, Vidura is like, uh, like the same age as, as Maitreya. Maitreya and Vyas, they're the same age, they're about the same age, and they're friends. But Uddhava is a young man. So Uddhava didn't want to go against the Vaishnava etiquette. So the Vaishnava etiquette is very important. How should this example be applied by ISKCON devotees at present? We should, Hare Krishna Maharaj, we should not uh, try to overpower or uh, show to be uh, smart more than the our uh, previous authorities and gurus. Yes, we have to follow in their footsteps only and we should not overwrite them or overwrite them. Yes. Yes, we should be respectful to the seniors and to the previous authorities. 
that's an important point, Vaishnava etiquette. Of course, sometimes people think that because we're ISKCON, we're all junior, and that everybody in the Gaudiya Math is senior. <laughs> is that true? Some people think like that. They think because somebody's in the Gaudiya Math, oh, Gaudiya Math, they're, they're senior devotees. Iskon are all neophyte devotees. That's not true. And here's the quote from the Chaitanya Charitamrita in relation to Sanatan Goswami. Lord Chaitanya is glorifying Sanatan because uh, probably you know the pastime that. Uh, Lord Chaitanya called Sanatan to come and to come and see him, and it was the middle of the day, so Sanatan did not walk in front of the temple at Jagannath Puri. Instead, he came across the, the beach, so he had to walk on the hot sand, and walking on the hot sand in the middle of the day, certainly the feet would be burned. But Sanatan tolerated that. He didn't walk, want to walk in front of the temple because he considered his body to be impure and contaminated. He considered himself to be low birth. He didn't want to have to go near or risk even touching people who are engaged in the service of Lord Jagannath. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, Lord Chaitanya was very pleased with him and he glorified him. My dear Sanatan, although you are the deliverer of the entire universe, and although even the demigods and great saints are purified by touching you, it is the characteristic of a devotee to observe and protect the Vaishnava etiquette. Maintenance of the Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. From Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antya Lila, 129 to 30, 130. Antya Lila, we didn't put the chapter. Anyway, that's uh, Antya Lila there. And here, Prabhupada also speaks a little bit about it. We have from a conversation, Srila Prabhupada talking, June. January 27, 1976, Garden Conversation. That does not mean that immediately all of them have become of the equal rank. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was so kind, but still there was distinction. When he was taking prasadam, personal associates, they were sitting with him. Is it not? Or, so this is called maryada. Maryada means honor. That must. Varieties must be there. Otherwise we become mayavadis. Everything is equal. All one. This is mayavada philosophy. No varieties. There must be variety. That is Vaishnava philosophy. And as soon as you make it varietyless, all equal, that is Mayavada. Just see, even in this flower, this is also flower, and this is also flower. Does it mean they are of the same rank? This is understanding. Prabhupada's holding two flowers, different kinds, different varieties of flower. And he's saying, does it mean they're the same? This is understanding. Together, they look very beautiful. But if you take separate value, then it is, valu then it is valuable than this flower. That distinction must be there. All right, so Prabhupada is talking. It's not all one. There are differences. There's different levels and we have to respect. So the question comes up then, who is senior? <laughs> and you can see here, someone may be senior by age. Someone is senior by the time of initiation. Someone else may be senior by managerial position. Someone is senior by administrative position. 
and someone is senior by spiritual position. But advanced, but when we talk about someone being advanced, then we talk about one's Krishna consciousness. So become advanced by becoming Krishna conscious. We give respect to all different people. So many different seniors are there and we respect everyone. We want to understand, however, the importance of becoming Krishna conscious. So applying the etiquette, this, oh, this, this is the same conversation. Kiba vipra kiba nasi sutra kini nai ye krishna tatvavet se guru hai. Whether one is a brahman, a sannyasi or a sudra, regardless of what he is, he can, be, he can become a spiritual master if he knows the science of Krishna. And Prabhupada's purport, this verse is very important to the Krishna consciousness movement. In his Amrita Pravaha Bhashya, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that one should not think that because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born a Brahmana and was situated in the topmost spiritual order as a sannyasi, it was improper for him to receive instruction from Srila Ramananda Rai, who belonged to the Sudra caste. That's Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, Chapter 8, 128. So Lord Chaitanya was happy to hear from Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai himself questioned that, you know, I, how, you know, you're the sannyasi, you're the Brahman, I should be questioning you. But then Lord Chaitanya quoted this verse, or, or, or said this verse, that what's important is you should know the science of Krishna. And then you become the spiritual master. So Ramananda Rai certainly, although he was born in the Sudra caste, he knew perfectly the science of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya was very happy to hear from him. And he's, of course, one of the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya. So here's a little exercise. You might like to try it. You know, explain the destruction of the Yadu dynasty and how it was by the will of the Lord. And you can refer to these verses, third chapter, 14 and 15 verses, and third chapter, 24 to 28, and then the fourth chapter, verses 2 and 3. Anybody would like to have a go about the reasons why the, the Yadu dynasty was destroyed and how it's the will of the Lord? Maharaj, <clears throat> the analogy that you gave that, uh, you know, sometimes the uh, wife decorates herself very nicely with the beautiful ornaments for the pleasure of the husband, but when the husband comes, you know, he removes all the ornaments and things because that is like burden for the wife. So similarly, for the earth, you know, the devotees of the Lord, the Yadus, they were the ornaments, but they were burden actually, so that's why before going, the Lord just removed them. Okay, thank you. It's very nice you remembered that example. Uh, it's not actually there in, in this section of the Bhagavatam. I took it from another section of the Bhagavatam. I think it's, I took it from the 11th canto. But uh, any other points? Uh, Krishna always comes, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Krishna always comes uh, along with his entourage and when he goes he takes them back with him. Oh, okay, yes, right, yes, very good. Uh, yeah. they are also saying that uh, like, uh, you know, because they were the family of the Lord, they were very powerful, and when Krishna lives living behind them, because of their post and position, pride may overcome, and uh, it will be, uh, no one can defeat them in this body because they are Krishna's family. Mm. And uh, that's why Krishna, Krishna only wanted to take them back to their original abode. Another thing you were mentioning, because uh, Krishna has uh, uh, didn't want any, like, like, like now we have caste Goswamis. Okay, I'm from Goswamis family, so everyone should follow me. So Krishna didn't want to happen that, okay, I'm from Krishna's family, so whatever I say, that is the like, classic. 
and Krishna is saying. So Krishna didn't want it to happen like that also. So he made sure that Edo dynasty also taken along with him when he went there. Okay. Your voice is not very clear, Prabhu. It's a little difficult to get everything you're saying. Anyway, uh, what, one in... Yes? Maharaj, there was one more point that you mentioned that uh, since the Yadu dynasty, they were all so pious, if uh, Kaliuga had to come, they were they should not have been there. So Krishna wanted the Kaliuga to start and hence that was one of the reasons why he arranged for them to be, you know, taken away from this planet. Yes, right. Thank you. Maharaj, it was also to show the lesson that if somebody offends a Vaishnava, then, uh, you know, the... Lord uh, does not excuse that. Since they offended Samba, offended Nardamani and other sages, so Lord you know, to show that he is not tolerable. And also, Maharaj, you mentioned there is a separation between Lord and devotees because they are all devotees of the Lord, and maybe they feel separation with, with the Lord. So that's why he want to take them away. With the Lord. Oh, okay, yes. Uh huh. Very good. One point I was thinking about, that uh, uh, the question comes up, why didn't they all just uh, depart from Dwarka? Why didn't it all happen in Dwarka? But it was point, it's pointed out that, uh, that if everyone died in Dwarka, they would all go back to Godhead, because Dwarka is a holy place. And so, you know, the Lord wanted the demigods to go back to their abodes in heaven. He didn't want them to go back to Godhead. They were not so ready to go back to Godhead. They had to go back to the heavenly planets. So that's why they all went to Prabhakshetra to fight, to do this. They didn't, and, but the eternal associates of the Lord, they remained in Dwarka, and then they returned to their abodes from Dwarka. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other points? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, you also mentioned that the Yadus were extremely civilized people and they were uh, very dear to the Lord, were extremely pious. And they actually offending Vaishnavas was something that was to be definitely arranged by the Lord and otherwise they would not have done it that mm -hmm. way. Yes, right. And similarly also, it's also true about the sages. The sages wouldn't have cursed other than the will of the Lord. You know, the sages would never have put a curse on the Yadu dynasty. The, the great sages like Narada and Vishwamitra and that, they were all there. And so, that, you know, are they, you know, they're not going to get so angry. Well, a young, young boy is dressing up as a woman and joking. Are they going to get angry? So, just like that, and curse the whole Yadu dynasty to be destroyed? It definitely, it had to be the arrangement of the Lord. Okay, and now there's another question here then. Uh, discuss the example of Uddhava being requested to go to Badarik Ashram. And we're referred to the fourth chapter, text 4, 20, and text 21, and then text 30 to 32. The example of Uddhava being requested, and discuss in particular how it reflects Prabhupada's mood. And is it and how is is relevant for our practice of spiritual life? So what is the the what is the the point here then? Uddhava being requested to go to Badarik Ashram. Do you see? Yes. So Maharaj, uh, Prabhupada mentions the purport that. Uh, in the association of devotees, one's eagerness for hearing, reading, chanting increases more and more and more. Yes. So that's why he went to Badarik Ashram, to increase his mood for hearing and chanting. <laughs> Prabhupada mentions that uh, in this connection that uh, when this would you can associate and increase his eagerness more and more. Yes. So this is Prabhupada's mood. Certainly, Prabhupada wants all of us to increase our, 
our desire for hearing and chanting. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, this, it is also to take association, like it said, the uh, relevance in the spiritual practices uh, uh, to take association of temple, uh, both deities and the advanced devotees in the temple. Uh, that's why Buddha had to go to Bhakti Kashma. Yes, right. Yeah, we definitely want to take advantage of the association. Prabhupada definitely wanted to see the devotees associate together. And that's why he established temples. He had devotees go and establish centers to give association. Sometimes people want to go away, they don't want association, they go into seclusion and isolation. But actually association is very important for us to keep our spiritual life alive. And so, and Prabhupada's mood, I mean, Prabhupada encouraged the devotees you know, if somebody would leave the Krishna Consciousness Movement, Prabhupada would encourage them, come back, come and join us again, don't go away, come with us, be with us. Whenever some old devotee would come, gone off into Maya, Prabhupada would always encourage them, come back. Thank you, Shambhu. Yes? Also, Prabhupada writes that how a, for a devotee, uh, Following the instruction of the spiritual master and fulfilling the order of the Lord is more important than even going back to God. So, Prabhupada is showing that he wanted to follow the order of Lord to go to Bhakti Pasha. Yes, right. The order. The order that we said, said in one purport, Prabhupada said that a signal was given by the Lord to Uddhava that he should go there to Badarik Ashram. So, definitely. The order of the Lord, you have to, you cannot give up the order of the Lord at any time. You have to keep that order of the Lord. So Prabhupada had that mood, he took the order to preach the message of Lord Chaitanya around the world, to, to print books. So, this is very important for our spiritual life also. So, Uddhava going to Badarik Ashram, we, you know, we may think, oh, I can also go to Badarik Ashram. Well, we can, right? We can also become a follower, like, we can become like Uddhava. You can go there, you can go to Badarik Ashram, but how long will you stay there? <laughs> Um, Uddhava, of course, had, had the mission, he had the letter to deliver to Narayan Rishis and he had the instruction from the Lord and he, the, he wanted to convey the information which the Lord had given him, all that knowledge which Uddhava had received, to be, it was to be given to the devotees there in Badarik Ashram. So the same way, we have received so much from Prabhupada from Prabhupada's teachings and Prabhupada's books, we are so much indebted, we also have to distribute that, to give that, to follow in the mood of Uddhava. Not, you can, you can go to Badarik Ashram if you like, now's a good time, well now, <laughs> a bit difficult to go now, I don't think you can go in January, but uh, after a few months, then you can go to Badarik Ashram and preach there. We go everywhere. I go to places in Russia. Places in Russia, they're so cold. They're, you know, there's even one place I go in Russia, there's no road. There's no, there's no, the only transport, you have to take a plane to go there. It's, it's a remote corner of Russia. It's a way over in the far east just near to Siberia. And we have a center there now. And there's devotees there. And they have a restaurant even. And, you know, they're doing nice preaching. And so, <laughs> you know, we can also have a center one day in Badarik Ashram. Okay. So, Vidura meets Maitreya after passing a few days on the bank of the river Yamuna, Vidura, the self-realized soul, reached the bank of the Ganga where the great sage Maitreya was situated. And that's fourth chapter, text 36. 
concluding quote from Śrīla Prabhupāda, although he, although he thought of himself as insignificant, he was remembered by the Lord, by His causeless mercy. Vidura accepted this as a great favour, and thus he cried. This crying is the last word in the progressive path of devotional service. One who can cry for the Lord in love is certainly successful in the line of devotional service. Srimad Bhagavatam, Third Canto, Chapter 4, Text 35. I remember Gorgovinda Maharaj wanted to make a school for crying to teach us, to educate all of us how to cry for Krishna. So Prabhupada also is appreciating how Vidura was crying for the Lord. This is the success of devotional service. Of course, it shouldn't just be sentimental. It should be out of intense love. Okay, so any questions? Any other Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes. is uh, Vidura is, uh, uh, sorry Maharaj, Uddhava is still available in Badrikashram until what time he will be there in Badrikashram? Uddhava? He, well, he's an eternal, an, an eternal associate of the Lord. Usually Uddhava is in Dwarka. He resides in Dwarka. In the spiritual world, Uddhava is the resident of Dwarka. I don't know if he's got an expansion who is there in Badarik Ashram. Maybe. But we hear of Uddhava as being the, a resident of Dwarka and he associates with the Lord. He's attached to the physical presence of the Lord. So the Lord had told him, you know, when you finish this would be his last birth and after this birth he was going to go back to the spiritual world and he'd be with the Lord there in, in Dwarka. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for your association. I have a question on uh, Maryada Vatikrama. Uh, yeah. So, in, am I correct if like, these two points I understood? So, if I'm wrong, am I correct? So, first point was if uh, uh, someone uh, senior to us in age or like advancement, he is asking us any question, so we may not answer. And second thing was that if someone elderly is present, then he should answer. So both are true, right? Because what? in practical situation, even if you are somewhere in some center, always there will be some seniors present. So in which cases, how to follow this principle? Well, everything, you know, time, place and circumstances. You have to consider. Someone's asking you a question. Are they asking you to become their guru? You know, are they just asking you a question, a general question, or are they, they, they're actually asking you, you know, I want you to be my guru, I want to take shelter of yours. You know, and that seems to be the indication there, you know, that Maitreya, you know, should be the guru of Vidura. Uddhava didn't think it proper that he should try to be the guru for Vidura. Hmm. So... It's a, it, it was not just a, a casual question. You know, somebody asks you a question, they may say, well, what was the class about today, or what did they say? You know, they're not asking you to become their guru, you know, they just wanted a point of information. So you have to consider like that. So that's not an offence if you give them, if you, you know, you, you tell them, you share with them. But if you're going to give spiritual, if they come to you for spiritual guidance, I want you to guide me, you know, you're more experienced, you've been in the movement longer than me, you've been in the movement three years, you know, I only just came a few weeks ago, can you tell me, you know, can you be my mentor or can you be my guru? Then you can tell them, well, there are many other seniors to me. You have to consider. You know, certainly you're living in an ashram with many other devotees, so, so you have a lot of seniors there. So you have to 
you know, in, put the direction to them that this is, you know, these people do that. You know, I'm, I'm still learning, I'm still training myself, so I'm, I'm not qualified. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, one more small uh, uh, doubt, Maharaj. Actually, uh, this, when uh, Sudhirva Swami was uh, telling uh, Srimad Bhagavatam to Parishit Maharaj, Nardamuni and uh, Vyasadev uh, were also present there. And uh, uh, is it not Mariyada Vratikraman? And how it is not Mariyada Vratikraman, Maharaj? Uh, because he was sitting on a Vyasasan, that was the exception of what Maharaj, please. Please Well, first of all, Sukadeva Goswami was chosen to speak. He was, it was considered that he was the one who was meant to speak. And uh, we don't know exactly how or when Vyasadeva and Narada Muni, when they all came there, but Certainly, it was uh, uh, it was uh, Sukadeva Goswami who was elected from all the sages who were present there. That, that he was the one that they understood he should be the one to actually speak Srimad Bhagavatam. And for Narada Muni and Vyasadeva to be present, not a problem. I gave the example that Srila Prabhupada would sit and listen to his disciples speak. In fact, of course, sometimes Prabhupada would tell disciples to speak. Sometimes he, Prabhupada would pick, you know, senior. I remember we went to one man, uh, one ashram here. I can't remember, one pundit's ashram, and uh, Prabhupada told Jai Pataka Maharaj and Tamal Krishna Maharaj both to speak. Prabhupada wasn't feeling well. He wanted them to speak. And so Prabhupada heard them speak. He was very satisfied. Sometimes Prabhupada would also have Achyutananda Maharaj. At that time he was a Maharaj. He'd have him speak. And then Prabhupada would listen. He liked to hear the, he liked to hear the devotees' classes. So similarly, Narada Muni and Srila Vyasadev, they're happy to hear their student speak. Srila Vyasadev is a student of Narada Muni and Sukadeva Goswami is a student of Vyasadev. So they've come to hear their student speak. They want to hear how well he's understood everything. And, and we're told that, you know, the, the parrot knows the ripened fruit, right? Shukamukadamrita dravasamitam. That the parrot knows which is the ripened fruit. So it's all the more sweeter coming from the mouth of Sukadeva Goswami. And Sukadeva Goswami had realized it, he'd heard it from his father. And he'd realized it and he's able to speak on it. And so Vyasadeva and Narada Muni, they're happy to hear. They're happy to sit and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. Sometimes devotee would complain to Prabhupada that oh, Prabhupada, if Prabhupada said to them, why you didn't go to class this morning? And the devotee said one time, at least one time it happened, Prabhupada said to him, why you didn't go to class this morning? Prabhupada, he, he said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I know everything they're talking about. I know what they're saying. I, I've heard it all. I know. And Prabhupada said, that's no reason for you not to go to class. He said, you should go. And said, then you can always ask questions. And you can enlighten more about what he didn't talk about. And you can inquire. And so even though one may be senior and know more, it doesn't mean you don't go and hear the class from a, a junior person. But we, don't, we do go because we take pleasure in hearing topics of Krishna. And we can always add to the conversation because our classes, we always have time for questions. There should be some time for questions at the end of the class and an opportunity for more discussion. And topics of Krishna are pleasing to everyone. 
You've heard it before, it doesn't mean you don't want to hear it again. We want to hear it more and more. And hearing it from different people, we get different tastes. So there's some variety there. It may be something you know, but you hear it from an, a different person, it's presented a different way. But it's still pleasing and helps us to get more realization of the subject matter. So it is important for us. We shouldn't think, oh, I, I won't learn anything, I know this, I've heard this, I've studied this before. And no, we should be happy to hear everything again and again. And we should always be thinking how to add to what is being said and how to inquire from something. Maybe some point was made which is not clear, then we can add to that point ourselves. So that's important for us in ISKCON, you know, we, uh, we want to have that mood, cooperate with each other and hear from each other. And some people sometimes they get the wrong idea, you know, and think, oh, I, you know, I've heard it all before, oh, it's boring. But it's actually good for us to go and hear. Yeah? Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Am my voice clear, Maharaj? Yes, okay. Uh, Maharaj, like, uh, I had a question that, uh, like, uh, how to understand, like, we know that all these reasons, uh, but uh, Krishna leaving the body, like, uh, just like uh, he got an arrow, got on his feet, and uh, so many people have a misunderstanding that uh, millions of people, they're just thinking Krishna left the body because of Jara, that he left the arrow and Krishna died because of that. And Krishna's cremation also, that, like a lot of misunderstanding is happen, happening in this past time. And so many people are not able to understand this and they're literally going away from Krishna. But whereas we see in other side, when we hear Tukaram Maharaj past time, like he in the self same body, he going back to Vaikuntha. And hearing this, millions of millions of people taking to, um, you know, like going to the temple of Pandarpur or uh, they're becoming devotees of Krishna. So if only Krishna had, like, that's Krishna's will only. But uh, how to um, conserve these two things, Maharaj? Because why, if Krishna is coming for delivery to so many people, if Krishna had performed uh, past time in which people could have easily taken to Krishna consciousness, then uh, it would have been benefit for more and more people. Like, I just, how to understand Maharaj? Yes, well, the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra are there. You can see how Lord Ramachandra got, went back to God. So then it's very easy for people to take to the pastime, except Lord Ramachandra as God. But Lord Ramachandra is not the supreme personality of Godhead. He's the expansion coming from Lord Krishna. It's Lord Krishna who's the original Swayam Bhagavan. So Lord Krishna comes to this world. He has his his mission, right? He comes once in a day of Brahma and he comes and he comes to display his pastimes. He's displaying the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Ramachandra, he's displaying the pastimes of an ordinary king, of a king, a great king. But it's Lord Krishna who is coming as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's showing us the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just like when Lord Krishna dances Rasa Leela, oh, people may say, oh, this is not good, this is a bad example, we shouldn't see this, this is not going to help people become devotees. But yes, Rasa Leela is not for these people. It's for the very advanced devotees, very pure-hearted devotees who can understand the position of the Lord and who can understand His pastimes. So when the Lord performs certain leelas, there's certain leelas are confidential and they are actually meant for the very special devotees who can understand these things. But ordinary people, let them hear Bhagavad Gita. Read the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna saying, surrender to me. Understand the Bhagavad Gita. Get the basic knowledge right. But you're not qualified to understand the, the disappearance of Lord Krishna. It's very, it's confidential. Usually we don't discuss. It's very confidential. So 
people have to understand the Lord has inconceivable powers. Before you try to understand these confidential pastimes, first of all, understand the inconceivable nature of the Lord, how he possesses inconceivable potencies. Can any ordinary person pick up Govardhan Hill and hold it up with his left little finger on the left hand for seven days? Can any ordinary person expand himself 16,108 times and marry each wife at the same time and provide a palace for them? Can any ordinary person go to Yamaloka and bring back the dead son of their teacher? Try to understand the inconceivable position of Lord Krishna. Then, once you understand that, then you will be more qualified to think seriously about how the Lord comes in this world and how he leaves this world. But certainly there are reasons behind everything the Lord does. There are reasons. And we just have to read, we have to hear more and more the message of the Acharyas. And then it becomes clear. You have to understand, Lord Krishna is very special worship. Manushya Nam Sahasrishu. There's only, it's rare that people are going to surrender to Krishna. You, you, just, you just want to worship Lord Shiva? Go ahead, go and worship Lord Shiva. You know, that's for ordinary people, materialistic people. They worship Lord Shiva to fulfill their material desires. Or they worship Lord Ramachandra. That is uh, the, the incarnation of the Lord according to etiquette, right? Mariada avatar. But this Lord Krishna is teaching something very special, the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's not under any rules or regulations. He's above all of these things. So it's very difficult for our conditioned mind to understand these things. We have to purify ourselves by hearing and chanting more to understand more his inconceivable potencies. And once we understand his inconceivable potencies, then you'll be able to make some sense of his appearance and disappearance. So like that. Usually the disappearance of, of the Lord is very painful for the devotees. The devotees don't like to discuss these things. But sometimes we do have to bring it up because we have to deal with it. As you said, some people have the wrong idea. They're thinking Krishna died, he got hit by an arrow in the foot. Does anybody die when they get hit by the arrow in the foot? First of all, the arrow didn't hit him in the foot, it just touched his foot. And the person who fired the arrow, Jara, I told you who he was, he's Brigu, you know, and he went back to Godhead and Krishna sent him back to Godhead. After he fell, and Krishna told him, I made you fire that arrow. So this is all the Leela, the, the Lord's inconceivable pastimes. He's arranged all of these different pastimes just to bewilder the minds of the innocent, materialistic, ordinary people who give up, oh, it's too confusing, I'm just, I'll go and worship Durga. Let me go and worship Ganesh or something, you know, it'll be much easier for me. Hmm. Yeah, okay. They'll never understand the, the, we can never understand the limits of Lord Krishna. There's always so much more, it's so deep and it's so inconceivable. All we can do is hear. We have to hear more and more. Okay? So that's my answer. Thank you very much, Mother. Hare Krishna. Okay, any other question? Okay, so then we'll finish here. So thank you all very much. Give me an opportunity to speak on this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I wish you all good luck in your Bhakti Vaibhav course. Please take care. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you.
Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'm really see you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.